Good morning, guys. It's Friday morning. I took a day off, and here we are 180 miles away from my house in a town called Redding. We're at Pick and Pull, which is a junkyard where they allow you to pull your own parts. And we are here for a date with Destiny. I'm here to meet a 2007 Lexus GS450H in person. Believe it or not, I converted a 1970 pickup truck, a Chevy truck, to electric using parts off of this car, this Lexus. And I've never actually seen one in person, touched one, sat in one. So hopefully we'll get some parts. So come along with Okay guys, I think we found her. Here she is, 50 shades of gray. So let's do a quick walk around. I've never laid my hands on one of these vehicles, one of these third generation Lexuses. So you can see here, 07 Lexus GS450H. I don't know what it has, what it doesn't. The problem with pick and pull inventory is that they tell you the car is here and when it got here. You don't want to drive 180 miles if the car got here three months ago. So this thing got here this month in March. So I'm here. Oh, so one of the things I was thinking about going after is the shifter. Maybe I'll still just get the shift mechanism. Anyway, but they don't tell you what's left on the car, right? It could be completely picked to the bone or everything could be on there. So I'm going to pop the hood open and see if we have the inverter. Okay, guys, so the inverter is gone, unfortunately. And they also cut the inverter plug. It may be salvageable of where they cut it before the synchronous serial wire starts. So this may make a good test harness, a bench harness. And they did not cut the transmission resolver wires, which plug in here. So I'm going to walk you through how to pull this harness properly if I can. If I can. And we will go from there. I will get, you know, uh, what I call a shorty or maybe I'll do a home run on the synchronous serial, serial cables. One of the reasons they cut this is because the inverter connector, the plug, is part of a main engine room harness and it, I think it goes through the firewall and it, you have to pull everything out in the car to get that thing. So anyway, I'm going to go after it. I should get the resolver cables, aka the transmission harness. I also wanted that shifter and it really pays to look around the car because I found this part in the back. Okay, it's it's butchered, but at least it has the kind of gear indication. So this transmission has a floor shifter. I'm going to peek underneath and see what we got in terms of, you know, um, transmission and drive shaft. That's also something that's desirable. Forgive me, guys. It rained and it is muddy and miserable. Let's see what we have down here. You're coming down here with me. Well, what do you know? Looks like the transmission is is it right there or is it gone i think it's right there there's a cross member drive shaft is gone i think i'm gonna have to lay down there and get a better look Okay, so I decided to warm up by 
pulling the resolver cables. This is part of the transmission harness. So they plug in right there really nicely into what will go through the inverter plug. And then this connection runs down here and I think it just loops back up. So I'm gonna to try to undo all this and see what we need. This has already been cut. So this is probably a cable or a branch we don't need. I'm not gonna to try to pull the whole harness. I may just thin it out here and buy it as what they would call a pigtail. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, let me give you an update on these resolver cables. So I decided to remove the loom off of them, but only for demonstration purposes. You don't have to do this when you're pulling it on the car. So I'm going to do it, try to do it one-handed to show you what we're really after here. And I suspect that this thing, it's plugged into some sort of a module there behind the radiator fan. But I think the actual resolver cables will continue up here across the motor and I think they will drop down to the transmission back back there by the firewall <sighs> carefully remove that extra piece so we'll follow it some more but yeah I wanted to show you these these two dudes here and what we're after I'll try to unwrap this tape to give you a better better idea of what they look like all right guys here's another update and why it's important so if you just cut let's say right here like three inches away or six inches away from where these plugs plug into the inverter, you would ruin these brown wires that are for shielding that loop back on themselves. So you really, when in doubt, just go like 18 inches down away from every plug because these are what the cables look like and see how those brown wires loop back. So I'm gonna follow them and one of them, I think MG1, this might be MG1, the, the wire sticking out, the red and blue, I believe those are temp. And on the other one, I'm not sure if I'm seeing the temp wires, but uh, this, is, uh, this is what we're pulling out. I'm gonna follow all the way down. Okay guys, we're continuing on with how to pull the transmission resolver cables. Uh, out of uh, Lexus GS450H, you can see I already pulled them out. Again, I only took the loom off to demonstrate to you what this looks like. You don't have to do it as long as you know how to follow uh, these cables. And they run across the engine here and in the States down on the driver's side by the transmission. I would say right now, these are quite lengthy. We're a third of the way down, done. So let's go the other two thirds. I'll give you another update after I get this part undone here. Okay, made a little bit more progress. Got past all this. And this harness sort of ties into the one for the injectors. I think this is a V6 gasoline engine. That's, you know, obviously it's a hybrid car, so it's a motor and an engine. So we don't care about the injector harness. We just split off these two right here. And now we're at this big, fogly uh, manifold, plastic manifold housing. And here we're trying to determine, I believe we're just going to run along the engine down to the firewall. And we don't run this way and into the fuse block. I think that's maybe where our inverter stuff would run. That's the production, as they call it, at pick and pull. They're running forklifts or whatever, bulldozers. So, yeah, let's keep going, get rid of this plastic and see where the cables go. So another quick update. Looks like we do continue on the branch down to the transmission, whereas these other ones veer off and go into this fuse block. So I remove the ugly, whatever this thing was. I don't even remember how it sat on there. This way, maybe. Yeah, I removed this plastic junk. Now we're continuing on all the way down this branch right here. So wish me luck. Okay, guys, a bit of a correction. So although the two resolver cables continue to run, as I mentioned, along the size of the engine on the driver's side and down to the transmission, the two corresponding temp wires, which from MG1, I think, uh, veer off and they do take this branch down to the fuse block. And I stripped down 
the conduit as much as we can. There's a plug there. I don't think it's worth undoing this fuse block just to get maybe six more inches. So this may be a good place to snip out the fuse block, the red and blue wires from one of the resolver cables. So here we go. All right, guys. I usually pride myself on pulling things the non-gorilla method, and I tried here. Unfortunately, I had to snip all the fuel injectors, injector connector plugs, because I tried to unplug them, and they're just so brittle, and I couldn't unsnap them. So here, I want to show you a little rewarding part, if I can, with one hand of stripping that housing. I Loom, I can never remember. I keep calling it conduit, but it's loom, wire loom. So here we go. I'm going to use both hands and pull on our cables here and try to make them drop down there behind the engine. And then I'll go snorkeling. It did rain pretty good the last few days. So, of course, I'm out here when it's wet. So this is as far as I think I can go from the top, possibly. And I'm going to try to pull that harness down. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but it was cut by the previous people somewhere up here. I did not cut all these. I just found them. These right here might be part of the shift solenoids or maybe safety neutral switch. So we'll go underneath the car and see what they are and what we need. So let's keep going. Well, shoot, guys. It looks like there might be a drive shaft under here after all. Uh, it's behind this big old heat shield, and I don't have my taping showing up. I really apologize if this is completely useless. I'm laying under this vehicle for the first time, trying to show you what it looks like. So there's the transmission, aka the gearbox, all this shielding that I'll try to remove, and see if we can get the drive shaft out. Okay, guys, with all this dumb shielding and all the plastic crap underneath that all the modern cars have, we have exposed a gorgeous drive shaft here. This is so recessed in the tunnel that it wasn't damaged by the forklift gorillas when they transport these cars at pick and pull. So this may actually be a possible extraction. Really nice rear suspension on this thing. All right, let me see if I can pull this drive shaft out and then we'll go back to pulling the resolver cables off the transmission. All right, guys, there we have it, our first extraction, a drive shaft, obviously, propeller shaft, drive line, whatever you guys call it in your neck of the woods. And I wish I could say it's the most beautiful one I ever pulled. So this is all we need for our convergence is really this flange here to adapt it to whatever drive line we have, as long as it's telescope, telescoping, telescoping on our live axles. It's got to go in and out because unlike a Turbo 350, where there's a yoke and it goes in and out of transmission, this one can't be fixed. It has to go in and out somewhere, so I believe it does it here. Now, here's what really pisses me off. Can you guys explain this cut? I honestly didn't see that when I yanked it, and now I'm pissed off. Anyway, still going to buy it, or at least that section. Okay, guys, here we find ourselves underneath the vehicle, continuing on with our disassembly. Trying to show you, so the harness will come down through there. Really hard for me to see here with the glare. So it comes down, and this is MG1 and MG2. This is what we're after. So this one you can push on with the flat screwdriver because the disconnection face is here. All of these are undone I am because they are a bitch to undo. And I'm allowed to use that term, but only when working in the field. This one is especially hard to undo because you have to press from the top down. That stupid clip is facing up and there is no leverage or anything like that. Then we continue on to here and we have two plugs. This is the shift solenoid comes off. And this, I believe, is the vehicle speed sensor, the tail, the transmission for the Gen 3s. The Gen 4 Lexus will have another like an oil temp or pressure sensor back here somewhere. The technique that I'm using here I want to share with you, which is dangerous and sketch, is I removed the rear transmission bracket completely from here. Okay, I did that, and that lets the transmission drop just far enough down below that we can get to this uh, plastic harness here. It is held on with, I want to say, let's see, one, two, 
this one's really hard to get to two and there's one up there three 10 millimeter screws so we undo that and we're almost home free so now there's there's some zip ties probably holding it in there i'm going to try to go at it from the top and maybe either drop this all the way down or pull it up we'll see i'll give you another update but almost home free on this transmission harness aka resolver harness well guys still at it and if you told me i'd have to pull the stupid intake off with one really crazy screw that you get your torque stuck in i would think you're crazy but that's what we have to do to get to this to the last harness bracket back there it's bolted on it's really hard to get to got to snip some wires back there too this is the only way so this justifies me paying hundreds of dollars for the harnai that i did buy on ebay Man, this is hard, hard work. I don't wish it upon anybody. Okay, guys, here's my first score. This is the drive shaft. The lady there was kind enough and charged me for a single piece, which are cheaper apparently than the two piece, but it's damaged. Anyway, all we need is this flange off of it. And this was 70 bucks, 68 technically. So this is my first purchase at this location, so I wasn't gonna haggle with them. Anyway, I'm taking a break, I'm dehydrated, and I'm going back to pull some more wire harnesses. Okay guys, I figure I'd show you this side. This is the neutral safety switch before I pass out. This is turning more into, can we reach it, can we get to it, rather than how should you pull it, because I am exhausted. Whoever pulls these harnesses for you, that, that's worth every, every nickel. Okay, so again, no no transmission mount. Be careful. I remove it. This thing drops about three inches. Then you can almost get to what you need. Okay, so sorry, shitty camera work, but it is what it is. I got to follow this, this wire somewhere here. I wanted to pull the oil pump, but I'm too tired. Okay, guys, I'm going to quit here. This is the resolver wire i pulled them both god damn every time i try to record that guy drives by resolver wires pulled every time i try to record the guy in a forklift has to drive by when i'm wrenching he's nowhere near so i pulled the resolver cables i pulled the new uh, safety neutral switch uh, plug i pulled the solenoid plug Guys, this, there was no water here when I started, okay? They opened something and flooded this, and it also was sprinkling. I already paid for the drive shaft. I had grand ambitions on getting more. I pulled the transmission cross member to find it was broken. I pulled the rest of the sink serial cables for the inverter plug, but I didn't get the plug because it was cut off. The inverter was already sold. I cut myself really bad. This is just one of the many cuts. So I'm quitting. I wanted to pull the shifter, but the console is cracked. I was thinking of running that console in my truck because it is a floor shifter, but not, not gonna pay for it if it's all broken up. So guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I was gonna get the oil pump, but I can't. I, I went under there just to snip the safety neutral switch pigtail and my back is soaking wet. Luckily, I do have a change of clothes. Uh, my pants are wet. This is ridiculous. Don't do it. Highly don't recommend it. Pay for the harnesses. Don't buy them from me. I'm not trying to sell you harnesses. If that's what you're thinking. I mean, I'll have some for sale, but this is way too much work. Oh yeah, I pulled the intake uh, manifold off, which was ridiculous. It's just a nightmare. It is absolute nightmare. If you think I left this like a gorilla, this is a clean uninstall of that harness, let me tell you. Thanks for watching, guys. I need some wine.